On 21st November 2024, Russia created history. Russia launched an ICBM on Ukraine. This is the first combat use of such a weapon since it was invented in 1959. The ICBMs are doomsday weapons to be used only as a last resort. Russian president announced on TV that this new missile has all the characteristics of an ICBM but is of intermediate range. He called the new missile Rishnik. It's unstoppable and as of now, non-nuclear. Orishnik carried 11 MIRVs and traveled for just 15 minutes before it hit a target in the Dnipro region at Mach 11 speed. By launching a strategic ballistic missile with MIRVs at hypersonic speed of Mach 11, Russia wants to send a clear message to Ukraine and to the NATO. Ukraine also announced that the Orishnik traveled so fast that it could not be detected or tracked, leave alone being shot down. But what is an ICBM? How powerful is it? And most importantly, is it possible to stop such a missile once it's launched? The world's first ICBM was technically the V-2 rocket fired by Germany on London during World War II. The V-2 rocket traveled at supersonic speed and hence was unstoppable. Some 3,000 rockets were fired on Allied locations by Germany and it stopped only after the Allies captured launching sites of the V-2 rocket. The V-2 rocket showed the world the power of rockets. After the war, the Soviet Union became the first country to launch an ICBM. It was called the R-7 Samyorka, designed by Sergei Korolev in 1953. The R-7 Samyorka first took off in 1959. Standing 37 meters tall with a mass of 280 tons, it carried a single thermonuclear warhead of 3 to 5 megatons. It had a maximum range of 8,800 kilometers. Ironically, a variant of the R-7 would go on to carry the Sputnik satellite to space, creating history. The US responded with the Atlas ICBM. These first-generation ICBMs, like the R-7 and the Atlas, were massive, required large launch facilities, and hence was vulnerable to be attacked. Since they were liquid fuel, it took a hell of a lot of time to launch them. Also, they were not accurate. They were primarily used as weapons of mass destruction, targeting an entire city and worked on the principle of Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD. Later generation ICBMs like the Minutemen were solid fuel and hence had faster launch times and hence was more reliable. Their guidance system were also much improved. Hence both the superpowers could use them accurately to hit military silos and command centers. A ballistic missile has three phases. The first phase is called the boost phase where the missile is launched. This phase lasts a few minutes and has multiple stages. Once in orbit, the missile enters the mid-course phase where the missile travels the longest distance. In this stage, most of the fuel is exhausted and only the warhead remains. The last phase is called the terminal phase. Here the warhead goes for a free fall and can briefly reach a speed of Mach 25 and then it hits the target. But the predictable parabolic path of the ballistic missile seemed too simple and could be countered. So the US developed the MIRV technology. MIRV means Multiple Independent Reentry Vehicle. It means a single ballistic missile can carry multiple nuclear warheads, each capable of being aimed independently at a different target. A missile equipped with MIRVs is a more potent combination as it can release several warheads during its flight each guided to a different location. Some of the warheads are decoys meant to fool anti-ballistic missile systems. The submarine-launched Trident missile could carry 14 MIRVs. This is what we saw in Ukraine, multiple MIRVs striking targets. So a nuclear ballistic missile with MIRVs is the most terrifying weapon invented by man. But it actually brought peace. Yes, these weapons ensured MAD or mutually assured destruction. This doctrine ensures that there will be no winners in a nuclear war. One of the ways of stopping a ballistic missile is during its mid-course period, which is also the longest. This is the principle behind NATO's primary defense, the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System. This system uses interceptor rockets called SM-3, which are fired from warships. The interceptor rocket has no explosives, but would travel at a speed of Mach 8 and using its kinetic energy would ram into a ballistic missile in the upper atmosphere. This system is very effective and the US has now developed the land-based Aegis Assure Defense System. 
In this system, the interceptor rockets are strategically placed on land. Once the ballistic missile launch is detected, the interceptor rockets are fired to intercept the ballistic missile during its mid-course stage. With the advancement in anti-ballistic missile defense, many nations have started to develop MARV technology. MARV means Memorable Reentry Vehicle. Here, the MIRVs are released as usual, but can be steered to randomly change the flight trajectory, thereby rendering the anti-ballistic missile defense useless. Ballistic missiles are classified according to their range. Short-range ballistic missile has a range between 300 to 1000 km. Medium-range ballistic missile has a range between 1000 to 3500 km. Intermediate-range ballistic missiles has a range between 3000 and 5500 km. Intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs have a range more than 5500 km. Ballistic missiles of intermediate range and above are always nuclear. Only then their cost can be justified. Also, longer the range, the more complicated it becomes. So only a few countries have mastered the technology behind ballistic missiles. Orishnik ballistic missile, which Russia launched on Ukraine, was an intermediate range ballistic missile. It was launched 1200 kilometers away from Astrakhan region. It traveled for just 15 minutes and attained a speed of Mach 11. On the terminal phase, the missile's six MIRE split up and hit the targets one by one. Ukraine has no defense against such a missile. Traveling at a speed of Mach 11 and capable of maneuvering in flight makes its flight trajectory unpredictable. This makes the Orishnik unstoppable. But Orishnik was not developed for a conventional war like this. It was a doomsday weapon meant for European targets. NATO cannot stop such a missile either. It is a wake-up call for the West. So it's time for the US and the NATO to make up their mind and bring an end to this war. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.